Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Who's on the calls? And this is Natarajan Subramanian. I go by Nat, uh, working in Tech Mahindra as a head of enterprise architecture and digital and AI, and also um, LFA governing board member and Akumos Project TSC chair. Um, <clears throat> today we are going to basically just seeing about and talk about LFAI, what is LFAI, and then also Akumos AI project. <clears throat> Let me go over the next one. And yes, of course, this is just a basic introduction of me. And um, LFAI project and LFAI foundation, it's basically founded pretty close to uh, three, um, yeah, two, two and a half years ago, uh, 2018, uh, March, and it basically founded by the members and predominantly focused on the AI space, machine learning space, and collaboration to create a, a harmonized AI ML space for uh, yeah, open source community. That's where we actually uh, promote it. And originally it was formed, it was called as LF uh, Deep Learning Foundation. And somewhere around last year, May, uh, the name has been changed into LFAA Foundation. And that's where we are right now. And there are many different projects among the under the umbrella of LFAA Foundation. And um, it's a just a governance overview. It's a single funding effort to support under the LF Foundation, Linux Foundation. And every project has its own uh, technical steering committees and they basically manage and have the, their own governing councils and operate it. And the structure is basically defined as like a graduated project and incubation project as similar to the, any other foundations under the umbrella of Linux Foundation. Okay. And um, uh, so the next one is what is LFA mission? That the mission is to basically build and support uh, an open AI source community and innovation and collaboration between the uh, an open source community. I know there are many organization, commercial entities basically involved and in developing on AI and ML solutions. However, uh, this is <clears throat> this is a one area where we can communicate and work as a kind of open source community and give a enough to the open source community and have a, a collaborative area. That's a keen interest and that is what the, one of the main motto for LFA mission. Okay. And um, just on a high level, uh, how that LFA is structured and governed. Um, and if you look at it, um, of course, there is a governing board. Um, every every premier member will get a, a voting membership and seat over there. And then there is a, a one uh, general member will get the governing board for every 10 um, general membership. So right now uh, we have uh, around some 10 plus general membership. And so there is a one general member uh, is basically sitting on the governing board. In addition to that, uh, we have a um, technical steering committee of individual projects and overall for the LFAI, there's an advisory council, technical advisory council and outreach committee, which is focused on uh, marketing efforts and then um, promoting that LFAI and other, other projects. In addition to that, there are many other subcommittees also. We can basically see that uh, subcommittees in, in, in a bit and uh, the hosted projects and uh, if you look at it there are more than 10 plus projects at this moment and uh, there are three major um, graduated projects um, in this LFA umbrella. Akumos is uh, one of them and the whole entire LFA foundation is also formed with an Akumos that was the first project graduated project and another one is Onyx which is Microsoft and Facebook and many many other organization is involved in it and that's another graduated project and similarly angel which is also uh, a product came out from tencent and some of other companies so these are the three graduated projects under the umbrella of lfai each has is its own unique uh, value 
on the AAML space. In addition to that, there are so many other incubation projects, which is under the umbrella, like in a Harvard, Adlik, Spikler, and and then it's move on. And in fact, <clears throat> quite recently, uh, we worked with the one big name um, organization, and they are also donated, um, basically joined LFAI and moved their internal project into LFA umbrella. I'm, I'm just holding that thought and announcement for the public announcement and until the LFA announce it. So that's also basically under the umbrella. So what does it mean is it's constantly growing and LFA is basically constantly growing in terms of membership and as well as in terms of the projects. So that's, that's what I just wanted to mention it. And then uh, next one is, um, you will see the uh, the key critical uh, and then members of the uh, organization. Like I said, who are all um, the premier members are around some like a nine of them at this moment: uh, ATT, Baidu, Ericsson, Huawei, Nokia, Tech Mahindra. I'm representing Tech Mahindra here, and ZTE, and and then um, uh, Tencent and Zillis. And these are the like in a high level uh, premier membership. And then there are many other members on the general category, including IBM, Red Hat, Orange, and Xenon Stack, and uh, iWin Stack, Gemini Cloud. In addition to that, there is an, a membership category called associate membership, where a yeah, non for profit organization, as well as an academic institution, also being part of it. And if you look at it, there are many um, trusted and ethical institutions and are basically part, part of it. And uh, universities like uh, NJIT, NYU, they are also becoming a member and they're actively involved in it on code contribution on the, the projects and actively involved in many of the project discussion and technical discussion and design discussion. So that's that's another, uh, another avenue of uh, basically taking this LFAI to more reach okay and um we will see that um some of the no, one second i'm going to uh, i just mentioned about some of the sub-level working committees which is basically very narrowly focused on the technical aspects of the um, the projects which is under the umbrella of lfa and one of the key subcommittee is ML workflow committee. Um, and now it is basically not only ML workflow, it also talk about interoperability. What this committee is basically doing is, um, we basically try to uh, lay out a ML workflow in terms of like a three category. Of course, when you, when you talk about any AML space, you, you need to focus on the data governance and you need to basically manage the, uh, the operational model creation and how it is basically work on it. And then, yes, you have the data prepped and model is there, but how 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 are we going to utilize it? That's where the rollout of serving pipeline comes into play. So these are the three areas of uh, the top level, top streamline, and then each one is basically aligned with many different small buckets. So this particular group committee, what is work is, apart from this laying out and streamline and and it also look at the perspective of all the LFA umbrella projects and where each project fits into this category. And that is the first step and see how we can basically work interoperability. Uh, for example, um, Akumos have certain needs of the serving pipeline rather than uh, reinventing the wheel on the Akumos side and see whether any of the other projects in the LFA umbrella have a, a serving pipeline which we can leverage. So that, that, that's a, a small example, which I'm laying it out. So that is a one step. And then beyond that, the next step is, okay, if they are not, what if, if they are not part of the LFA umbrella? And if they are on the general LFA, <clears throat> LFA uh, what do you call it? AAML space and still in open source. So we can basically take them to the next level and see whether we can basically work with them and then bring into that. So if you look at the, the left pane of the, uh, the the slide, there are many participants. They are not actually um, LFAI uh, members, but they are very actively participating on this discussions and then see how this can be basically taken to a next step. So mm -hmm. that's what we are working on with that. And and then similarly, there is one other key committee, which is a trusted AI committee. Um, I know 
AI ML space, uh, machine learning space, it's always a concern and 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 every every community as well as in a public public mindset is whether we can basically trust that artificial intelligence or like machine learning algorithm so um so lfa is not wanted to get into the uh, uh, approach of basically ratifying or certifying whether that algorithm is basically um uh, passing all the criteria or not however we wanted to basically certainly get involved in a general principle where uh, this needs to be in a guidance level and working principle level. So that is where uh, this committee was formed. And this is basically looking at the product and tool sets and projects which can basically help um, whether it's a bias detection or, or robustness or vulnerability check or whatnot or fairness. So all of this is basically comes under that as in like a working group committee. So this evolves and then define the policies and guidelines and then and, and then share it with and then look around and communicate with and in this area there are some couple of projects also going to become joined at lfai umbrella pretty soon so that's that's a trusted AI committee and 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 if you look at it there are many organizations basically get, getting on and involved in it and defining the principle and the use cases and use cases is basically a working committee which works on um, specific use cases and tools okay and 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 i know i'm going on uh, on a slide by slide and i'm going on i i have a time at the end of the presentation and enough for question and answers so i'll keep it that uh, and i don't want to basically just disturb the flow and if you have any questions you can post it on, post it on the q a with the speaker i will certainly look into it at the end of the session and then i'll try to answer whatever the possible if i have if not then i can certainly reach out to you in an offline or you can communicate with me offline, okay? Um, next slide is basically um, give a overview of um, what is the LFA landscape? I know it's a, it's certainly an eye chart and if you look at it, there are more than 200 plus projects in a, in an open source community space, uh, predominantly serving that AI and ML space. Um, um, starting from many different criteria. So this is one of the LFAI's effort, the technical committee and the technical advisory committee, and as well as the uh, internal staff team of the LFAI, they work together and put across this landscape. And it, it it's not only LFAI projects mentioned here, it also the projects which is across the open source AML space. And the, the bigger icons like an Angel or Milvus and Akumos those bigger icons are basically LFAI hosted projects. Other ones are basically an open source projects, not still under the umbrella of LFAI, but it is an open source project. So this this will basically give a guidance. And, and if you look at it, um, so many contributions and so much of um, uh, uh, commitments, <clears throat> commits across this project. Okay, so now, I just gave a overview of LFAI and LFAI landscape and everything. And then I just wanted to basically take into the next step of very specific and narrow to that Akumos project, how this is conceptually initiated and how it is. So uh, back in 2017, um, uh, Tech Mahindra and uh, at and at the beginning of the time, we were looking at the perspective of, okay, the AI space is basically um, phenomenally getting growth. And then it's a new digital age, right? It's like gonna moving on. Whether it is like an uh, individual uh, uh, companies, which is involved in high-tech manufacturing or energy and utilities or uh, banking and financial or insurance or healthcare, every company is talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. And if you look at it, and based on the McKinsey report on 2017, there are some 26 to 40 billion dollar investment on the artificial intelligence by every company. I know it is a little bit of a, a three or four year old chart, but if if I look at it, I'm guessing on 2020 this is much more higher. Every, everybody is basically looking and seeing a value in it. And then we were looking at a perspective how we can basically work on and bring a, a commonality and having a platform, an artificial intelligence platform for a common use. That's how that idea was basically initially conceptually originated. 
and AT&T and Tech Mahindra started working collaboratively, basically work on a, an artificial uh, platform, intelligence platform, where the models can be basically onboarded and then basically available as a, a microservice so that it can be de deployed and served for the necess necessary needs. Um, and then the, the, when, when the model is onboarded, it is already pre-trained and come with like an, some kind of a predictive capability. That's what we meant. Okay, so that's how we started. And, and then and it, it, it's not just the telecom industry, the Tech Mindra and at and is a tech, like in a telecom, but it's not basically the refraining of this particular uh, platform being utilized only for the telecom. It is basically having uh, option to adopt it by every industry and every business domain in, in, in across the, uh, in the globe. Uh, whether it's a security space or whether it's a, like a healthcare life sciences or financials or, or utility company, energy generation or whatnot. You, you can name it. Every company has an opportunity to basically leverage this platform. That's what this highlights is about. And, and, and then as we go further down, and this is very specific to Akumo's AI. And, and we will go on this diagram of architecture diagram a uh, high level platform diagram in the next uh, few slides. But before that, I just wanted to give a um, high level overview um, that how much of commits we have and how much of people basically uh, contributing so far. Um, and so 7K plus commits and then and 100,000, 100, uh, sorry, 100, 100 plus commit contributors are on the, on the um, contributing. And like I said, uh, this is an open source project and it is licensed and uh, by Apache Turato and so that it will be basically can be adopted and utilized by any organization if they wanted to and individuals also. Okay. And then uh, next we are talking about the little bit of a highlights and how are we uh, in the past year. I know um, after we, the project is, uh, when we started working with the collaborative with AT&T and Tech Mahindra, 2017 and then 2018, the seed code was launched. And then along with the LFA, LF Deep Learning Foundation um, uh, formation on March 2018. And since then, there are four releases has been uh, basically out. Um, so 2018, end of November, the first release was launched, which is called Athena. And then 2019, there were two major releases. One is Boreas and Clio. We kind of like are following the Greek god, Greek god mythological name analogy, nomenclature. And then just about uh, not just about a month ago, we launched uh, Demeter, um, which is um, launched. And then we are currently working on the Demeter point release and point release two. And then for the 2021, for the next year, the major release will be codenamed as Alpis. And then there'll be a subsequent um, point releases, uh, like an uh, updates and everything. I know uh, in the past, since Athena to Clio and Demeter, uh, we worked in the modest up and day of like an, uh, releasing a major release every six months. And then there's a one point release after that. Um, but uh, we saw that and evaluated and as we getting slowly matured, instead of basically releasing every six months a release, we can go with an approach of basically a one major release a year and then two point releases like an every quarter. That way we can basically have a breathing time to accommodate any of the bug fixes or defects raised by the community and then any other small enhancements which we can do. And major major releases will have certainly a new features. So that's that's a uh, a hierarchy and that is an achievement in the last, uh, um, I would say, in the two years since we launched this uh, um, Akumos project along with the LFAI. Uh, next, we are we are going to um, see the um, the presentation on the um, uh, the quadrant, major quadrant, and it looks like uh, okay. Let me see that whether I can. Go into a okay. Okay, now everybody sees the four quadrant. I believe uh, the the first quadrant is basically um, how are we creating and onboarding a model. 
and many different toolkits like a Scikit-learn, TensorFlow, H2O, R Cloud, and C++. So those are the toolkits which we at Akamos platform is currently supporting. So the the model can be onboarded and and pre-trained model, and that can be basically a commerce here and then convert it into microservice uh, for a specific deployment needs, or even the model can be just onboarded as such. And there is an option to basically onboard a pre-dockerized model also. Um, if you don't want to basically uh, convert that uh, leveraging the microservices engine on the Akamos platform. So those are the options which you basically bring in and onboard the model. And then in, in addition to that, you have an option to basically train the model and not within the platform. We are basically slowly working on enabling that feature. However, you can basically take the model, the pre-dockerized model or, or microservices model and then train the model and then basically bring back and onboard the model. And that's what it is basically uh, given like in a four option. And then you basically, once you have the models and everything is available, you basically go for a, um, the final option of basically publish this model on the marketplace, like an app store. So when you publish it to the marketplace, who the users community can, can come and see that, what are the models which is available and what is it? And each model is also, given an option to basically uh, go with a, a searchable catalog, uh, domain specific. So that that's a feature which is available on the marketplace or publishments. And you can also share, when you publish, you don't want to publish the model to a public place, but if you wanted to basically share it with a small group of people where you wanted to publish and then basically uh, evaluate, that also possible. You can basically take the model and share it, and then you can basically work with your peers and to evaluate, and then once everything everything is ionized, then you can basically take it to the public. That is also possible. And then lastly, uh, which is basically an execution, where you can basically um, generate and execute the model and deploy it. So that's that's a, uh, the the fourth quadrant, which is basically looking at and target environment is basically since it's a Docker image, you can basically deploy it in and wherever you can have a raw Docker. Docker capability of running engine, Docker engine, or you can basically deploy it through the Kubernetes or your own uh, internal private on a hybrid cloud or public clouds like an Azure or AWS, whatnot. So uh, through the platform, or you have a option to basically download the microservice and then take it to that your internal parameter and then deploy it in the, any way you wanted to. So that's, that's an option which is. So we, the, the Akamos platform is trying to basically uh, give a, uh, a full life cycle for a, a, um, a, a AML algorithm. That's what it is. Okay. And let us go about um, how we evolved uh, from the, the, the four releases. Uh, like an app. So on the Athena, it's predominantly focused on uh, enhancing the model onboarding and model deployment. That's where it was basically predominantly focused on, and which is basically uh, model, model centric. And then on the Boreas release, it, it started basically, okay, the model is onboarded, uh, but it is pre-trained and how we can basically allow the model to kick in to be pre-trained and, and uh, given an opportunity, how we want to do that. That is where that, that, that area was focused and enhanced. And okay, this two element is covered, but there is a one important element which we kind of like kind of missed out, which is, of course, the data. So without any data affiliation or, or alignment, the model cannot basically give any kind of a value proposition to the end users community. So that's when that team was, project team was focused on how we wanted to basically give it like that. That's why the NIFI pipeline, data pipeline is basically integrated with that. And also um, given an opportunity to basically create and do that modeling on, on Jupyter Notebook also. So those are the things which has been taken care of on the clear release. And then at the time of the Demeter, that is, which is just launched on June, the, uh, the team was looking at like, and how do we take this into a little bit of a much more hierarchy and a higher level, which is basically a cl cloud enablement. So the, the whole entire platform is now, can be deployed in a Kubernetes based environment uh, whether it is your on-prem solution or whether it is basically a, um, a cloud native like an Azure or AWS, which is running on a Kubernetes. So that is one. In addition to that, model deployment is also 
because most of the organizations are mostly aligning with the Kubernetes. So you have an option to basically deploy your model through Kubernetes. So that that is a feature which is basically came in the Demeter release, okay? And then um, the next is, um, um, just talks about like an, uh, in a high level, how the platform user flow is, right? Um, and of course you have a, a toolkit data and machine learning engine where basically microservice repository, microservice generation and everything, and how it has been basically perceived. So if you look at it, you have an a analyst who basically predominantly focus on a data and as well as on the machine learning algorithm. And their focus is basically on that side, okay? And they will work with the modeler to basically create that model. And, and once that is done, at the end of the day, it basically goes to the, uh, the end users community. And the end users community doesn't mean just not necessarily an individual. It could be a, a business organization or a department which basically needing to run that algorithm to basically get a necessary result. So that's that's a user flow if you look at it. So modeler is involved and analyst is involved and then the user community is involved here. <clears throat> so this is like a high level flow. Okay, and then um, I'm, I'm going to the next slide, um, which is of course um, talk about the highlights of the uh, the Demeter open source release. And and if you look at it, like in a, a platform CI/CD on a, on um, Kubernetes and and model deployment is also have a feature to basically work on um, uh, Sova JS and and then um, model workbench like in a predictable and ML workbench. And then one of the other key features is like a licensing where you can, um, we, we, when we go to a little bit further, we can basically talk about the licensing. Uh, in, an, in a high level, um, for example, through the through the federation, a company A, Akumos uh, in um, platform can federate with the company B, um, Akumos platform and then they can start exchanging their models between A and B. Um, and then they can also basically going through the license manager for tracking and, and whatever the terminology is and whatever the licensing term they wanted to work on, they can do that. And in a way, that way it will help the, the between the two organization, company A and company B to basically uh, monetize the, the model, machine learning model. So that's the whole entire uh, is is about the licensing um, usage manager, and then uh, right to use is the the terminology which we are using. What are the terms they wanted to use it for? And then some of the key statistics uh, are on the right hand side, which is like and how many lines of codes which is basically developed on the Demeter release, and how many projects, sub projects or model we wanted to call it, and then um, how user stories and tasks, and how many epics has been addressed. So these are the uh, the high level on um, on this one, okay. And 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 then the next slide is basically talk about a technical eye chart, um, uh, which is basically a very granular level of um, a platform architecture. I know we saw one four quadrant, which talks about like in a high level, but this is very specific about um, in in granular level on a four biggest buckets of the uh, the Akumos platform, like an onboarding and design studio, and then the validation, and, and then the, like the portal marketplace, which is basically do that. And then you can also see the the, the gateways and the interfaces, uh, like an E1 interface and E2 interface, and then E6, which is basically talking about training and as well as the deployment, model deployment, and then the federation is a E5. So each of these things is there, and then in the rightmost column bottom, you will be seeing the the lump, which is basically sitting outside of the platform, which manages uh, uh, the the what you call license usage manager. So this is this is like a very high level, and the the toolkit support libraries are on the left panel, and then the federation is basically talk about that is also another element which talks about how the models are basically integrated and uh, it can be exchanged between the company A and company B. And it is not just going to limit you between company A and company B. You can have a multiple federation with the multiple organization and, and you can also have a private catalog between the company A and company B because you don't want to probably want to share 
um, uh, the company A and company B's catalogs with the company C. So that those are the things which you can do that here. Okay. And then uh, the next is um, in, in the cloud migration and how we adapted and how we basically worked on it is basically laid out and many different layers, starting from the infra layer, infrastructure layer, and then what are the application services layer. So um, and like I said, um, it was basically Kubernetes enabled uh, Helm charts and Helm charts is basically bucketized into two groups, the core elements and as well as like an, a dependent, dip, dependent element and then the application services. So the every services are basically bifurcated um, and, and and then allow the, the community to basically take it and then utilize it. Or if any of the existing nature, you for example, if you already have an EFI pipeline or if you already have a Jupyter notebook or if you already have an access repository, then you don't have to basically create one. You can see how we can basically leverage and utilize that existing footprint. So similarly, the database also. Uh, th those are the things that's been just laid out here, okay? And then if I go to the next one, and and this is basically just talk about in a high level um, how um, this ACUMOS is basically uh, help any organization. I know um, there are many solutions available in the uh, native, in a commercial, or uh, uh, from the enterprise option offerings from AWS and Azure and as well as uh, IBM or Google or uh, many, many, many organizations are doing that. It, it is not limiting you to utilize them. And Akumos also have a space to work and work along with that because there are uh, 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 native APIs and exposed and external APIs allowed here and exposed here, which will allow you to basically integrate with the uh, AWS or Azure ML. So, we are also constantly evaluating and we are also looking at an option as we progress and then basically in our upcoming releases and see how, how we can basically give that our Akumos platform to basically work on with the natural um, uh, commercially available and the enterprise grade products. So that's that's what it is talking about. And, and then um, this one is the one which I uh, talked about a little bit earlier about the federated training. And it's basically um, you, ha you have a um, model um, which is company A and company B. It's not only you are basically um, sharing your model between company A and company B. For example, company A wanted to basically sell the algorithm to company B with the necessary um, licensing feature or whatnot. However, um, the company A, whatever the algorithm it has, has, it does not have the enough information or privilege option to access the data where that company A has it, company B has it. So this federated model, federation allow them to basically move the model through company B, and then the model can be basically trained and retrained or learned on the continuous learning on the company B environment and then basically refine it. And then it can come back to the company A for any kind of a modifications or fine tuning or updating. So this is the one mechanism for a, a reiterative process. So this, this particular federation helps that one. So this is what it is. Okay, I, I, I know I, I given enough um, high level features on the Akumos platform and I just wanted to basically go over a um, little bit on the um, uh, use cases. And uh, we are coming very close to the uh, timeline before we go to the Q&A. I wanted to have quite a bit of time for the Q&A. Let me go to the use cases, samples, examples. Um, uh, some of the use cases which we are currently leveraging the Akumos platform. And of course, it's basically the platform is there. However, the model on the one which we are basically leveraging it. One is, of course, uh, the, the virtual machine lifecycle management. Um, it basically, uh, that particular VM model, algorithm machine learning model, basically track and monitor all the virtual machines, benchmarking and performance, and it basically predict any kind of a failure and alert it for the routine maintenance or anything. So that was a, one of the great use cases which was basically deployed and trained in the Rakumos platform and then basically deployed it into a user's uh, a, a, in, in segment and then basically monitored it. Another one is uh, image classification. And that is a, one other model. 
and the last one is a sentiment analysis so these are the one uh, those are the three use cases high level use cases and in addition to that there are very specific use cases also we have for uh, other other community open source projects um this is um um uh, an or and rig side for the um, um uh, orchestration managed orchestration area um so akumos platform basically gave like a microservice and platform was able to basically federate with them and and then basically cater their uh, the microservices to them because the the, the war on community itself do not have a capability to basically create a, a microservice instead they are leveraging the akumos platform to generate the microservice and take it to that next level um similarly we have um uh, with one app also and um and uh, same akumos platform basically worked on it and create the <coughs> um microservice and passed on through the federation and moved on to the um, own app uh, akumos instance and then it basically taken that microservices and added some of the specific need for the dcie in order to basically have that model run on the dcie platform and then design it and then basically they were able to successfully run that so these are the other classical example how the akumos platform can work with the collaborative another open source projects so that was a, that was a one of the things right and 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 then we also have um, another example the ric um, or and ric like an edge level deployment where we can able to basically deploy the uh, the microservice on the ric uh, integration ric model okay and then let me go to the next slide which will talk about one of the features of the design studio um in um in micro uh, sorry in akumos uh, we call it as aku compose where you can chain the microservices models um in this use cases um there are few of the microservices basically chained together uh, if you look at it like a fraud solution image um, image mode and then sentiment mode so all of these models are chained together and basically gave a one 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 bigger microservice with the model runner coupled them all of them and gave a one integrated solution so if you look at the next one it gives a, a, a classic example right it basically gave a, like a face reduction it basically gave, gave an option to face blur and then and then it also gave a, a option to give a um, uh, which region or like a, what kind of a, um, a, a apparel they want and and also uh, their mode whether they are in a sad mode or happy mode and those are the things so so this is an option i'm just a tiny example so this uh, given an opportunity for a yeah, community to basically chain the models and then basically serve the purposes rather than creating a, a one biggest algorithm and then worry about the um, performance so this is like an another option which they can do it and then um we are, we are pretty much come to a close um so this these are the uh, main resources of the uh, lfa and akumos the first two links are basically lfa foundation a link another one is like a wiki page of the lfa foundation where you can see the different committees and their um, actionable uh, meetings and there are action items and then meeting notes and as well as any presentation and everything and then the other things below mentioned on the three of them are basically um very specific and narrow to the akumos project whether um akumos.org which talk about the whole entire project or we can talk about the wiki page where that project meetings and then technical staging activity um architecture diagram architecture discussion community discussion and everything is there and then documents carry all the release document and as well as everything else and um so that's um, pretty much it and i would like to go to the next screen and we are pretty much close to 40 minutes and i believe we have a uh, 10 plus minutes left let me go over for any questions or anything um i'm just looking at um um okay uh, let me just read out a question from one of the gentlemen mr kreiser 
how do you solve problems such as GPD, uh, GD, uh, GDPR compliance and privacy laws and with the federal model used here? Um, so the expectation is, actually, of course, the ACUMOS itself do not have any kind of a compliance or mechanism or anything embedded into the system. And uh, our expectation is in a company A or company B basically bring in the model algorithm. We are expecting at this moment to basically make sure that they follow all the data compliances and making sure that that is basically coming into play at this point. Um, but and if there is, there is an opportunity and if any other open source tool, which is basically have a cross reference down the line, yes, we could potentially take that and then, um, and then do the uh, API level interface and allow them to basically and scan through or, or allow them to basically screen through. I hope I answered your question here. Let me go to the next one. <clears throat> and I see Akumo's platform only supports Ubuntu. Uh, is it CentOS or any REL uh, distribution supported? Um, on, on this one, um, um, and, and a personal experience, I would like to basically give an update on it. Um, yes, of course, um, the platform is developed on Ubuntu. However, our Tech Mahindra team has basically deployed in CentOS and it was working fine. And in fact, um, in at and is also tried on the OpenShift, uh, which is basically uh, based out of RHEL. They supported it, but there is no official support, but I don't see them having any problem in running it because it's all basically uh, based on a Linux kernel. And, um, um, and how can a business access this service? Um, and like I said, if this is like a complete and open source project. Um, they can basically go and then um, take it from the akumos.org or wiki.org and there is a um, the links which is mentioned on the presentation will allow you to go, so basically go and then download the whole entire um, uh, the platform and through the repos and then you can deploy it on the organization as an open source. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And it, it, it can be white labeled um, because it's an open source and then you can basically take it. And this is from another gentleman, Ron B. And uh, for example, uh, our organization, I belong to Tech Mahindra, I work for them. Our company basically took it and Akumos and then basically branded um, as our enterprise product, as an open source product. Uh, however, I'm not 100% sure that whether you have to be a member of LFAA or anything. You can basically double check with the LFA umbrella and do that. And if you would like to want to basically check with me later, um, I can see whether I can connect with you to the LFA umbrella team. Um, and then um, uh, that's pretty much it, the question is wise. Um, if anyone have any other thing or any other open discussion, um, I'm pretty much open. And, 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 and I believe we are pretty close to the time. We are just five minutes, um, five minutes early. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just open to basically for any, any questions or anything which you wanted to basically ask here. I'm going to be available and I'm going to stay on this call for the remainder of the five minutes for the session to be wrapped up. And let me look into it. Sure. Um, I, uh, so the, the meeting will be ending in about a couple of minutes. Uh, before that, I would like to basically tell the team and as well as the participants, thank you for all your attendance today. And you can always check um, <clears throat> and uh, chat with me on the Slack on through the open source um, um, on the ELC uh, Slack option and I'm available for any of your questions or any of the narrow ones. And also there are many other um, AAML track um, 
uh, topics throughout the uh, OSS Summit. So please do attend that and then basically get more information. Okay. Um, I think um, we can we can we can close the session. Thank you. Thank you all.